broadsword played a major role in the culture of Europe throughout the 1600s, 1700s, and into the 1800s. But the small sword really served a purpose that you might not be aware of. So what we're gonna take a look at today is we're gonna take a look at the history of the small sword. Small sword was actually an evolution from the bigger rapier sword that came out in the 1600s. So in order to truly understand the history of the small sword, you really need to kind of take a look first at the history of the rapier sword. Often people refer to the rapier sword as some sort of pointed sword with no sharp edges. That is far from what it is. The rapier sword was specifically designed for long reach stabbing as well as slashing on the battlefield and as self-defense. I recently did a video on the history of the rapier sword. I'm going to put that link above. It's an awesome video. If you want to know more about the rapier sword, check it out. But the true rapier sword was designed for thrusting and slashing. It was lightweight and very flexible compared to the earlier two-handed swords, which made it a very effective weapon on the battlefield, but more effective for one-on-one -on -one combat and self-defense became a one-handed sword that allowed longer hits from a greater distance, which you can never achieve with a broadsword. This cut and thrusting weapon quickly evolved and became a very popular civilian weapon primarily for self-defense. By the late 1600s, the rapier sword became more of a one-on-one -on -one combat weapon for civilians than a battle sword, with the thrusting technique being spread all over Europe with master fencing instructors like Rocco Bonetti out of Italy who brought the fame of the rapier sword to Europe. You had masters like Camillo Agrippa who was mentioned in the movie Princess Bride, Rudolfo Capafera and Vincenti Savola who really brought about this fame of the rapier sword. But the problem was, was ultimately the rapier sword became more of a self-defense weapon and it quickly became more of a fashionable item as well. As you began to see the hilts become more and more stylish, people were wearing swords for fashion reasons and not necessarily for self-defense reasons, which then brought about the small sword. Rapier swords, especially earlier rapier swords, are very long and cumbersome, and they were very difficult to carry around for fashion purposes. So along came the small sword. And the small sword evolved mostly, again, for fashion reasons. It was easier and more stylish to carry a small sword, which still had the fancy hilt on it, than it did a giant sword. So the small sword evolved. It was still a very effective self-defense weapon, definitely better than nothing, absolutely better than a dagger, and still better than a two-handed sword. The short sword was really designed to make it easier to navigate the European culture getting in and out of buggies, going to balls, that sort of thing, without having a giant sword. So this small sword eventually became more and more popular because it was more and more comfortable than a regular rapier sword. However, the masters continued to use the rapier sword even into the fencing we see today. So the small sword really only had its purpose in the fashion culture as well as a fairly decent self-defense weapon but ultimately the masters still continue to use the rapier sword and the fashion people throughout Europe continue to use the small sword. So there you go, there's our history of the small sword. I'm sure there's some things I didn't mention about it, put it in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this episode of the History of Weapons.